Hi guys, in this tutorial I am going to show you how to use a piece of software known as Secure Shell to remotely connect to another computer. SSH or Secure Shell comes pre-installed on Unix systems, on Linux systems, uh, Mac OS. However, if you're using Windows and you want to follow along with this tutorial, you might have to use the Linux compatibility layer or there are some third-party alternatives that I'm going to talk about at the very end of this video. So for this first part of the tutorial, I am simply going to teach you how to use SSH or Secure Shell in order to remotely connect to a computer via the terminal and run a couple of command line applications. These are not graphical applications, these are text-based applications. In order to activate SSH, you need to run the command SSH. After that, you're going to need to type in your remote username. This is basically the username to the remote computer that you are trying to connect to via the internet. And then you're going to need an at symbol. From there, you have the choice to either put a domain name or an IP address. And this really varies. Uh, if you're using your home computer and don't have a domain name, like google.com or something, then you'll probably need to know your IP address to connect to that. So it'll be like remote username at 192.168.this.that. Whereas if you are an employee for a certain company, you would probably say SSH remote username at company name dot edu or dot com. Here at UT, my username is dcanoe. And no, I am not giving you my password. The domain name is cs.utexas.edu. We have one extra step to that because, well, we're UT and we're an educational institution. And that is we have to connect to a specific server. In this case, I'm going to connect to a server known as ADA, A-I-D-A, S-S-H. And then I type in my username, dkundu, D-K-U-N-D-U, at ada.cs.utexas. Edu. I put in my password and BAM I am in. As you can see I am remotely connected to an Ubuntu Linux system. I can type in any sort of command that you can run on Unix systems because well I'm remotely connected to a Unix system. I can go through directories ls minus a I can say cd documents I can even open up doc documents wirelessly via Vantage before output.txt and BAM! I am wirelessly viewing one of my notes. Say I wanted to run a program like Firefox. Let's just have some fun with that. As you can see, I can't run Firefox because apparently it has an error. No display environment variable specified. Well, okay, I guess that just means I can't run it wirelessly. Actually, you can, and I'm about to show you how to do that in the next segment of this tutorial. In this part of the tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to connect to a remote computer system via the command line, but also run graphical programs. The command that we use is ssh, remote username, at domain name. My username is dkundu, d-k-u-n-d-u. And I also need to connect to a specific server, and that server that I chose to use was Ada, A-I-D-A. -A. Domain name here for computer science at UT is cs.utexas.edu. Basically, what I'm about to do is add one letter, a hyphen and a Y. And what this does is it allows me to basically use graphical programs remotely on my computer. So ssh hyphen y space remote username at domain name or well an IP address. Let's try this out with my example. ssh minus y dkundu, which is my remote username, at AIDA the server dot cs dot utexas dot edu. Type in my password. And now I can run command line programs, I can run commands, but at the same time, as you're about to see, I can also run graphical programs. So for example, I love using a program called Genie. It's an integrated development environment. Just give this a second to load, and bam, done. 
So here's a graphical program running wirelessly through SSH. I can create a new file, I can open files from that remote computer. So right here I have homework 10, homework for my computer architecture class. Well, I can just open up that file wirelessly. I don't even have to be at that computer. I'm just remotely connected. And I can edit this if I want to, and I can save it, and voila, I'm done. You can run Firefox on this if you want to. Let's say I wanted to run multiple graphical programs. Well, as you can see, I can't type in any new command because right now when Firefox is running, the command line is not accepting any other commands. So does this mean that I can't run multiple graphical programs at the same time because I can't type in the commands to start all of these programs? Actually not. There is a very neat trick using something called Boolean Algebra that I'm about to show you in the next segment of this video. I showed you how to use the command ssh-y in order to run graphical programs wirelessly. I'm going to show you how to run multiple graphical programs wirelessly, which is a, program, uh, a problem that we encountered in the last tutorial. Um, let me just illustrate that problem for you quickly. So if I were to start up a graphical program like Genie over here, as you can see, I can't run any sort of other command. And for multitaskers, this will be a huge wake-up call. Obviously, it would be very hard to multitask, if not impossible, if you can only just run one program wirelessly. Thankfully, there is a trick behind this. So in Unix, when you're running processes, you can actually tell the terminal that you want to run multiple processes. And all you have to do is say, write, write, type in the command that you want to type in. Say, I want to start up Firefox, and then include an ampersand symbol. And what the ampersand symbol does is it tells the computer that there are some commands that I want to run after this while simultaneously running Firefox. So I type in Firefox, it opens, and I have room to type in and open more programs. So if I want to, I can open Genie again, ampersand, and the command line is free to run even more programs. You can actually run many programs over the internet uh, using this method. However, I want to caution you about something. All of this is dependent on your internet connection. If I were to say run MATLAB, the graphical version of MATLAB, um, through this internet connection, it would run painfully slow. I heavily caution you to not run too many applications at once, and certainly not heavy applications. So right now I'm running LibreOffice and Office Suite over the internet, and I can just write documents and whatnot and save them to my drive at school wirelessly. So here I am logged in to my SSH session, and I can just clear that. And I'm just going to simply show you how to log out. There are several ways to do it. You can type in log out, you can type in exit, but there's a very simple way. It should work in most cases. All you do is type in control D and that logs you out. The connection is closed. Finally, I want to go over certain alternatives to using SSH directly through the terminal. The main alternative that I want to talk to you about is something called PuTTY. And this is specifically for Windows users. You can use it on a Mac, but people on Windows need it more because they don't have SSH installed, I don't believe. You can just download SSH on this website, P-U-T-T-Y. It's a free SSH and Telnet client. And as long as you have the necessary information, such as the IP address of the remote, remote computer or the domain name, your username, and your password, you should be fine. It's just like SSH virtually, except you're doing it through a different client, which is PuTTY. That's going to be all for this tutorial. I'm going to leave the links to download PuTTY below, and tell me what you think about this. This has been Ben Cat. See you next time.